I've now started up Presenter 10. And if you're new to Presenter, I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the key features. So down here at the bottom, I've got my teacher toolkit. This is a floating toolbar that I can place wherever I want on the screen. As I go through the toolbar, I've got crayons, I've got handwriting pens, highlighters, erasers, my mathematical tools, connector lines, shapes, and then text editing. When it comes to pens, if I click on the color and I click on it again, I've now got a palette so I can choose various other colors and assign them to my presets down the bottom. We're now going to have a look at one of the fantastic features of Presenter 10. If I click on the media icon, it brings up my media library. Within my media library, I've got 3D models, illustrations, sounds, different backgrounds, various tools, images, and then videos. To begin with, though, I'm going to select tools, and I'm going to come down to our touch table tools. These are multi-touch tools, and in this case, I'm going to click, click on multiplication table race, select perhaps a three-player game, click go, we're going to have a look at the four times table, and click start. Various cars are going to appear on the screen. Once they're on them, I can grab them, and as you can see, this is multi-touch, and then when I want to, I can place them down, find the correct times table, and it will park the car. I'm now going to return back to presenter by clicking on the table icon, open up the media library, and in this case, investigate one of our other tools. I'm going to come to Humanities and Social Sciences, Geography. And in this case, I'm going to look at a topography example. So I've brought up Europe here. And as you can see, I've got practice mode. This is fantastic for students to lead self-directed learning. Once I've clicked on practice mode, I'm going to click on capitals, perhaps 10 questions, and then click start. As it comes up, it places the capitals on the screen and then asks me a quick key question, which is Riga. Now, I'm unsure where Riga is. And I'm thinking that maybe it might be down here. And in this case, unfortunately, I got it wrong because it's up in northern area. If I was to go to Madrid, though, I'm confident it is the capital and I've got that correct. I'm now going to come back on, click the select tool, and in this case, delete this tool. And moving back to the media library, I'm now going to come up to a 3D model, and perhaps we're looking at prehistory, and we're looking at Neanderthals, and perhaps they had to meet a mammoth. So I've placed the mammoth onto the screen, and because it's a 3D model, I'm able to rotate the mammoth as I wish. Should I wish to make it bigger or smaller, I can pinch and pull. And from this, I can lead a variety of different lessons, share with the students, and get their uh, take on what the role the mammoth might have taken. So as you're aware, Presenter 10 has a vast array of different images in the library, whether it's 3D images or illustrations. Sometimes, however, though, you're going to want to go and search on the internet or place your own content into a presentation. So again, opening up the media library, I'm going to come down to images, and I can now safe search directly into Google, find my image, and it will be placed into my presentation. If, however, I want to place my own content in, whether it be from USB or from a file on the computer, I'm going to come over to the right-hand side here, click on the hamburger, come out of full screen mode, so I've just got a smaller window. I'm going to click on File Explorer, and when it opens up, again, I'd navigate to where my content is. In this case, I've got a lovely image of a puppy I want to place it into my presentation, so I select it, and then I drag it over into the open window. This then inserts the image directly into your presentation, and then it will be saved into your library. From here, I can come back on to full screen mode, and now back into presenting my lesson. So now I've inserted an image from File Explorer, my own content. So if I want to manipulate this image or any object on the screen, I'm going to select the Edit option next to the presenter icon. I'm going to select the image. In this case, I'm going to drag it to the left-hand side. I'm going to select the mammoth, and I'm going to drag it to the right-hand side. As you can see, when I select an image, I immediately get my marquee handles. So should I wish to resize, I can quickly grab the corner, resize as I wish. I can rotate from here. And also, I've got some soft menu buttons appear at the top. The first one on the left-hand side is a bit like right-clicking. 
So I can cut, copy, duplicate, infinite duplicate can be really useful, particularly in maths. And then I can play around the image itself. So I can crop the image or indeed add transparency. The final option is ordering in terms of the layers on the screen. Next to the um, edit options, I've got the attachments. So in this case, I can add in building blocks, in which case a quick assessment, or indeed I can insert or attach my own sounds. I can link to another page in the presentation as well as hyperlink to a website, or indeed add a frame. Finally, I've got the lock image. And in this case, I want to delete the puppy. So I'm just gonna click on the bin and now it's deleted. So I've now gone to my ProWise. I've selected a history lesson, in this case to do with ancient Egypt. And in this video, I'm gonna briefly talk you through the page manager, which is found down on the bottom right hand side. First of all, I can click on the page number and then I can see an overview of what pages I've got in my presentation. Click it again and I'm back onto the main page. If I now select the page overview, I'm just looking at page one in this case. So I can see it's centered in on the landing page, in this case, the introduction. And perhaps I want to show the pupils an overview of what they're going to be covering in this lesson. So next to 100%, if I click on the overarching view, I can now see the table of contents and where I'm going to be leading in this lesson. And to move back to that central page, if I just click on 100%, it zooms me nice and smoothly back into the center page. Finally, I've got the ability to click the hand icon and I can now manually move across to the various areas I want to cover at various parts. And should I wish to, I can zoom in and out as I wish, or indeed just return back to 100%. In this case, I'm focusing in on our table of contents. So thank you for listening to this introductory video on Presenter 10, which I hope you've enjoyed. Just to remind you, if you go to My ProWise, you can then select the lessons and you can find, uh, find pre-set lessons that you can then use in your classroom.